Hi everyone! This is part one of a three-part video series where I show you how I create flowcharts for my AI assistant using Miro. And by AI assistant, I mean this kind of intelligent chatbots like I have one here on my own website, SwissAIAutomation.com. Flowcharts like this are super useful because they give you a great overview about what your chatbot is doing when and they can be used to discuss with your client what option you want to go for or what changes you want to make. And this is much more practical than discussing it directly in a software like VoiceFlow or BotPress that look very technical and will more likely than not confuse your clients. In this part one of the three part video series, I show you how to go from basic up to a first draft of the flowchart. And that will already be quite useful for you to think through what your bot is doing when and adding new decision paths, but it's probably still a bit messy. In part two, I'll show you how to organize it much better, make it look more pretty and basically good enough to show to your first clients. And finally, in part three of the series, I'll show you how you can create a really professional looking document up to the standards of large multinational companies like McKinsey, Bain or BCG, which are known for making really professional documents for clients, even up to executive level in other big companies. So that's something you might use for really big clients, but probably not for everyone because creating these type of documents takes a bit of practice and also takes a bit of time to make. But in part three of this series, I'll show you how and I'll also share with you some templates that will make that much easier. With that said, let's get started. All right, so the first thing you have to do is go to Miro.com and log in or sign up for an account if you haven't and then create an empty new board. All right, so here we are in Miro with an empty whiteboard in front of us and I'm personally focusing on language schools. So I'll show you how I draft an AI assistant for a language school. And we'll get started by just choosing a shape here. I always like the squares with rounded corners. I think that looks more aesthetic. So let's just go with this and we'll make sure it has some kind of filling. Doesn't really matter. I go for white here, but you can choose any color that, that you like. I wouldn't go for a really dark one because that will not look very nice or not very professional at least. And uh, then we can get started. And uh, usually I have a start block where everything begins. I'll adjust the font size so it's like nice and readable. Actually, we can also make the block smaller here and zoom in because that font size is really huge and I don't think we want that. So we can choose some more standard font size like 24 and then just make the whole thing smaller. I'm actually not sure if it makes a, a difference really, but that's just what I'm used to. And so after start, we can just use command C and command V and create a second block and just put it down here. And then we can create an arrow by just clicking on this blue small dot here that's below the shape, click and hold and then connect it to the other block such as here. And we'll start with some basic greeting. And after the greeting, the next thing that my AI assistant should do is ask for the interest of my student. And in flowchart theory, you're supposed to use a diamond shaped object to clarify that this is a decision point. And some people will tell you that you should only ask yes, no questions, but I think this is overkilling it. And I clarify the kind of questions by just adding a question mark and then adding multiple paths. And so we also connect this one and then uh, we will give the student or whoever visits the website some option. And because now there are several options and now I like to not have this, uh, this um, block below, but instead on the right side. And then if it's on the right side, if we have three here, you can see, even though I make it really quickly, I already just try to align it a bit. Now we can just use an arrow here and do that same thing again and a third time. And now the um, paths of these arrows don't look weird. It's just kind of nicely organized. And so because we're talking about a language school, we could say students could be interested in group lessons, private lessons, other services. 
And uh, yeah, like I have this kind of logic also on my website where I ask this kind of question, but I'm not a language school. So I think I'm asking if they're interested in different AI services or like automation or chatbot. And if it's a gym, you could, uh, you could say, are you interested in, in workouts or in supplements or whatever? So this part, you can basically adapt very easily to whatever industry or, or company you're serving. And then after this is answered, let's uh, ask them for the name. And we'll also connect them. And we'll give them a chance to enter the name. Now, this is not a button anymore that they can click from, from a selection, but it's a free a free text field where they can type and later on we can sort of uh, mark these buttons with different colors and stuff but because this is video one we're just where we're just doing a rough draft i won't bother with that then we're also asking for the email and they have a chance to enter the email as well let me here also add a question mark and connect them and then for the email, we'll actually make a check because we want to make sure this is correct. And so here they will get two options. They will get a no email wrong option. And we'll also give them a yes, correct email option. And we'll also connect them. And if the email is not correct, then we will just ask them to type the email again. And now you see there is some kind of a problem. This doesn't work well, so we can just move it on the other side and move this one as well. And well, now this is a bit messy. Let's just redraw it like so. And like so. And so as I told you, this is a quick and dirty version. So we are not actually making a big effort to like standardize the gaps and everything here. But uh, we continue. If this is correct, then we now finished identifying the user and we'll basically go to the main logic of this AI bot. And we'll ask the user, how can we help? And if you see, the bot on my site, for example, SwissAIAutomation.com, there are more words in each of these text blocks. I just make it super short here so I can keep the font big and it's very easy for the client to get an understanding of what is happening everywhere. And so this one will then branch out in many possible other options. So I like to put this very high on top and connect it uh, with the correct email here. And we'll give the user three options here. The first option is I have a question. The second option is I want to call someone. And we're offering them a third option, which is that they don't want anything. They just want to leave their contacts um, and they want to leave again. And this could also be uh, the case if they thought they will talk to a real person here on the chatbot, but they're actually not getting that or whatever. It's, it's a very useful thing for us to have that and it doesn't hurt. So let's just put it there. And then uh, if they want to ask a question, let's briefly connect these three first. If they have a question, then we can ask them to actually type the question and then we'll give an AI answer. And this is now where we use AIs like ChatGPT to help us answer questions based on a knowledge base. And I like to highlight this with a stronger color. In my case, my company color is always red. So I like to highlight this in red and to make it fit. We can even do the font white and make it bold and many other things. This is just a very quick version of how this could be done. Uh, and th this way, it's very obvious where the new smart AI assistant 
actually comes into play and where it's not just a traditional chatbot. And uh, what I also found out is that sometimes if, for example, you use voice flow, the knowledge base will not have any relevant answer to what you're trying to look up. And then you can create a path from no data and just provide an alternative answer. And what I like to do here is to just say, sorry, I don't know that. And here is some contact, in contact like either a Calendly link or a phone number or email where the user then can actually contact a real person and get their question answered that they tried to get answered by the AI but couldn't. And no matter what happens here, the next thing that the user should be able to do is ask another question if they want to. And so in this case, we'll connect both of these blocks back to that option. And if they have more questions, then we'll just let them go back here to the question block. And if the answer is no, then we can still ask them if they want to call. Because in the first question up here, they chose that they want to ask a question, but still they might want to have a call, right? So now we are just going to link this block up to here. And because they don't match nicely, we'll move this a bit to the right. And this goes a bit further to the right as well. And then we can let them book a call. And this can depend on what your client wants. Uh, some might have Calendly links. Others might want to put their phone number here directly because they have the phone number on the website anyways and they're always available. Or uh, they might have some other kind of form where, where they want to link students or interested people forward to. And so at this point, because some people come in from uh, the main dialogue directly to here and they didn't have a chance to ask a question, will now prompt if they want to ask a question again. And they'll also end up here if they come through the first question block uh, because that's just easier to handle it this way and perhaps they have more questions. And now you could think that, okay, we can just link it back to here, but then you have kind of the danger of going into an infinity loop where they ask questions, call, questions, call, but actually, they already decided that they want to want to have a call, so they don't need this anymore. And the way to solve this, by the way, I see I, I connected this wrongly. Let's fix it. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I neglected to add some answers here. So for the question of the call, this should have been yes and no for no call. So like this and like this. And then if the answer was yes, then they should have come up here to the call thing. Yeah, so my bad, but this is how it should look like. And if they want to uh, ask a question again, or for the first time, we'll just create another question block and we'll just do it all the same, except asking for the call down here. So we can just copy paste, move it over here, make a bit of space here, and then if they say yes to another question, yes, let's make some more space. Let's move this here. If they say yes, then we just move forward to the other question block. And the other option is that they say no, and we'll move down here directly something like this. And then they go through this whole question block. They again have the chance to ask as many questions as they want to, but if they don't, they will also exit this loop here. And the last option, and the last option is that they said they don't need anything. And here you could just uh, say, thanks, bye-bye. But what I like to do here is add another question block. Uh, anything we should 
No. So then we can actually find out what they wanted and why they were not satisfied if they were uh, choosing this path. So here I'll give them a chance to add some user input and then thank them. And then that's basically it. All right. And now we have all these open paths here. Uh, so in the case that they did finish after a first question and didn't want anything anymore. We can also just thank them. And in the other two cases, they booked a call, right? So what we can do here is thanks. We'll talk to you soon. And depending on how the call option works here and if you have Calendly or whatever smartly integrated, you could of course also add the time and place or location or link or whatever of the call, but that's a more complicated thing. So most likely you're, you're not doing that if you're just doing a simple AI assistant. And so in these two cases where they booked a call, we'll uh, forward down to this block and then we will have the end of the conversation. And usually I like to put the end at the very bottom right. So start at the top left and end at the bottom right. Yeah, and so this is a very rough first flowchart. This is already really useful. And if you compare it to how it would look in voice flow, it's much simpler, right? You can discuss what happens. You can basically show any kind of client uh, how, how the bot moves from start to finish, what the options are. Maybe they say that like here in the beginning, students uh, might want to also have the option to choose beginner classes or, or advanced classes or whatever ideas they may have. You can discuss it and incorporate it. And what you can also do is uh, just share that with your clients. And you need to pay to get an export version in high definition of this. But what you can always easily do is just take a screenshot and that will also have a very high quality and you can send that. So you can do all of this for free. All right, and this was actually everything that you need to know about creating a simple flowchart for your AI assistant to think about it yourself and also to discuss it with your client or your potential client. In part two and part three of this series, I'll show you how you can make your flowchart look much better and more professional, which is good for creating clarity in your own head but also for making a more professional impression because clients they will think that if your documents are well structured and well designed, they'll think that your chatbot is also more likely to be trustworthy and reliable and not have bugs and all these kind of things that people could think about you if you're just starting out as a new AI automation agency. All right, that was it. If that was useful, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe and that will also help you not miss part two and part three of this series. And if part two is already out, I'll make sure to link it up here so you can just click it and learn how to make the flowcharts look professional and more presentable to clients. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.